be followers together for me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Now here the Apostle Paul, right near the church of Philippi. I mean, we could have started way back earlier in this, we don't have enough time. Okay, but, verse number 14, the Apostle Paul's wrapping up the great passages of Scripture where he forgets those things which were behind. Because if he thought about what was behind him, he never would get over what he used to do to the cause of God. But he says, I forget them things. What's he do? He press towards, presses towards the mark of the high calling, the prize of the high calling, of Jesus. He's saying, there's something a whole lot better in front of me than there was behind me. So, as a result of that, he says, let us therefore. What does therefore mean? Because of what I just said, let us do this. He says, let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. Now, perfect doesn't mean sinless. Okay, he said us. Right, he says, let us. Therefore, he said he was the chiefest of sinners. The Apostle Paul said, hey, there are days that I do what I wouldn't do, and there are days that I would do, but then I don't do. He said he wrestles every day with the same flesh that we have. He's not talking about sinless perfection. What's he talking about? Those that have a perfect faith, a complete faith. And thankfully, Jesus didn't deliver unto us a faith that was contingent upon what we could do. He finished the work and then gave the gift of salvation. Right, nothing is like, all we got to do is receive it. But once we receive it, we then must apply it. He's saying, those that be perfect, those whose faith is not lacking. What's he talking about? Well, he says, to be perfect, right, we must forget those things which are behind and press toward the mark of the icon. But then, he also lists after this two more things. He's saying, if we are perfect in our pursuit after Christ. He says, we will do these things. Okay, we'll get to those here in a second. But he says, once our faith is not lacking, once we have forsaken all and just gone after Christ, he says, be thus minded. What's that minded? He says, well, and if any other thing ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. He's saying, if we really want to serve God, be thus minded as what he just said. Forgetting those things which were behind, press toward. He says, be unified in that way. But he says, if that's really your heart's desire, he says, if you've got anything in you that's contrary to that, God will reveal it to you. It's one of the beautiful things about what Jesus said when he said he would send the comforter. He said, if I stay, you can't have the Holy Ghost with you says the Holy Ghost is the perfect or complete promise of many of the promises in the Word of God. He'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. It's kind of hard to do when He lives inside you. Right? Cast all your cares upon Him because He cares for you. Well, it's pretty easy to cast your cares upon the one that takes your prayers to the very throne room of God. That the Holy Ghost takes our intercessions to our High Priest, Christ Jesus, that we can walk directly into the throne of God. I don't have to put faith in somebody else taking my prayers to God. God takes the prayers to God, and then God's sitting at the right hand of God, who prays to God for me. He says, the Holy Ghost will reveal unto you where you aren't necessarily all in. He says, if you're sold out for the things of God, God will reveal those things in you which maybe you didn't know before or maybe prior to today it wasn't an issue but if you be otherwise minded God's going to show you. But then if you are perfect in faith when God reveals that there's something in our life that He's not proud of what do we do? Well those that are perfect they repent of it they turn from it they get it made right. So let's keep going. It says, Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, 
be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. Verse number 18, remember when I said those that are perfect? First, they're sold out to follow after Christ. They've got that desire. Okay, well, verse number 18, for many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Well, if you've got a perfect faith, certainly not going to be the enemy of Christ. But when we don't sell out for God entirely, I mean, Jesus said, man cannot serve two masters or love one and hate the other. So you're either all in or you're all out. So if we have something in our that we are not thus minded that will forget those things which are behind and press toward the mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus. Okay, when we reserve something, when we hesitate, when there's the temptation to delay our duties, we become enemies of the cross of Christ. Why? Well, some, they just haven't decided. They're not determined. They don't have that desire that they're going to go out and follow after, first and foremost, Christ. Everything else, secondary. But then there are those, in verse number 19, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly. What's that mean? Their cravings are what rules their life. Their desires, their wants, their hopes, they don't forget those things which are behind. In fact, they heap together more things which are now, and they let the temporal things rule their life. I mean, let's be honest. We can make fun of teenagers. There's a whole lot of adults out there that live for the thrill of finding out that somebody liked one of their posts on Facebook. Okay? I don't have to deal with that. Why? I just, I just don't use it. I've still got, eventually, we're going to have to have a high school reunion, and somebody was stupid enough to put me in charge of making that happen way back when we were in high school. So I have to have contact with everybody. So I've got one. I think last time I checked, I've got like 125 friend requests that I haven't done anything with because it's been that long since I've been on there. That, some of them, good church people, it's just I haven't been on to accept it. I had to delete the message app on my phone because I was tired of seeing them red bubbles every time on my screen. I'm like, I know I'm not going to read them. Let's just get rid of it. But there are some people whose whole mentality is geared around what can I get people to appreciate or to like in my life. Their God is their belly. They get that craving like I do for Pop-Tarts. Okay? Except they get a craving for something else. And it's all they can think about. It comes forefront to their mind because they have no discipline. Those that have a perfect faith, right? their desire is solely for Christ. But then their discipline is that they're able to reign in the flesh. Those that have a perfect faith can say, not because of an arm of flesh will fail me. I can't fight the world with the world, but greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. That in every temptation, he makes a way of escape. But sometimes it's not temptation, it's just that you want to do something. May not be anything wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with going to the driving range, Brother Josh. Okay? Because when I go there, if I lose a ball, it's not my ball. I don't care. Right? If I go to the golf course and I lose it, I paid for that, I'm losing money. Right? Driving range, don't have to worry about that. There's nets everywhere. I can't accidentally kill somebody with a slice. We're good. Nothing wrong with going to the driving range. Nothing wrong with going to a movie. Nothing wrong with taking your significant other out for a nice dinner date. Josh, she didn't pay me to say that, but do it. Okay. Nothing wrong with those, but when they interfere with what we know we ought to do for Christ. It says, forget those things which are behind. We're not supposed to forget those around us. In fact, He fitly framed to get us, or fitly framed us together. He made us one that we do take notice of those around us. All right, he's not saying put your family on the back burner. No, just God first, others second, yourself last. 
that my desire should be not to be the person that I think I should be. I want to be the person that Christ wants me to be because I want them to see Him in my life. Perfect faith is understanding I desire Him because He's altogether lovely and He's everything that I ever could desire or need like we heard about on Wednesday night. But more importantly, I desire Him so that people don't see me, but that they see Him. And in order to accomplish that, we have to be disciplined enough to say, I deny self. I deny the world. I refuse to become a partaker of those things which He changed me from. I'm a new creature, not the old one. But some people revert back or they never forget those things which bind and their desires, that craving, runs their entire life. But then you go on to say, verse number 19, whose God is their belly and whose glory is in their shame who mind earthly things. Some people want to be decorated. They want glory. They want to be able to puff out their chest and say, look at all these little pins and things that I have. Right, but what's it say? Whose glory is in their shame. Some people, in fact, I think it's a part of just human nature, and I'll explain why here in a second. But if you really desire something, it doesn't matter what you have to do, you'd sell your own soul to get it. If you want it, you'll go get it. Right, you want to know why some people, we're not talking about you know, best of the best NFL, NBA. Right? Those guys are freaks of nature. They was born different. There's something different about them that they can do the things that they can do. Right? I'm talking about somebody this big or smaller. You want to know why some kids can hit a baseball and other ones can't? Because some kids want to hit a baseball bad enough that they go out and they practice. You want to know why some kids quit running down the field halfway through? Because they don't want to finish. They don't want it bad enough. But there's something that's just a part of each and every one of us that if we want it, nothing's going to stop us. But Well, when we desire those things which are in the world, I mean, that's what the end of verse 19 says, who mind earthly things. They don't mind heavenly things. They're concerned with the temporal things, the carnal things. If they want it, they'll get it, even if it means that they have to shame themselves along the way. They think that the ends justify the means. If you don't believe that, look at Washington, D.C. There used to be a show called House of Cards, right? You know why they stopped making it? Because things in Washington got so crazy that they couldn't write stuff that would shock people anymore. That was the whole point of the show. Well, imagine if this was happening in Washington. It already was. Nobody just knew about it. Right, but people will shame themselves hoping that what they become at the end with this little thing on my chest that I can show off to people, that that will justify everything that they had to do along the way. There's only one problem with that. When it comes to the world, the more that you do like the world, the more you become like the world. It doesn't matter what you put on, what you can tack on to somebody. You can put a crown, you, know, you can throw it out in the swamp, Right? You're not going to be able to see it because it's going to sink below the water. You can mire yourself like the world, but no matter what you attain, your glory will be your say. Hey, I'm happy for you, but why don't we get out of the swamp? Hey, sure, it took a whole lot of hard work, but what would you have to do in order to get it? Some people take no thought for what they'll lose, what they might ruin in their life. All they see is the end goal. They want to be decorated. But let's be honest. Okay, ever since Adam and Eve were thrust out from the Garden of Eden, there's been something down in the gable end of our souls that knows there's something missing. What was that? That was our fellowship with God. A lot of people don't know why they have that desire deep down inside. They know they're missing something and they think it's approval. 
they think, well, if I can get decorated enough, if I can get enough awards, if I can get enough acclaim, then everybody will just accept me, no matter who they are, and no matter where I go, people will always be my friend. Well, if you think that life is that simple, right, enjoy your naivety while it lasts. But there are some people, if I can just work hard enough, those people at the job will like me. That person at the job probably doesn't like themselves, which is why they don't like you. Right? Don't take it personally. They are worldly minded. Their mind is constantly full of things that are as shifting sands. You see, here's the problem with an award. It only means something if you're the only one that ever gets it. Have you seen the word? They're giving out awards for everything. Nowadays, you don't even have to show up to get a participation trophy. Right? They started doing... <laughs> I'm not kidding. They had... Uh, what do they used to call them? They called them field days. When I was in school, they didn't, you know, they'd have the 100-meter race and, you know, all the softball throw, all that kind of stuff. And then they had the non-athletic stuff for the non-athletically gifted people. Okay. But everybody got, you know, one of them things that said field day this day or this year. Even the kids that didn't show up to the field day got that rep. Then what's the point in giving it out? Right? I get it if they were there. Right? Everybody, we got a day out of school. We didn't have to go to class. That's worth celebrating. Give everybody a ribbon, and we don't have to go to class today. Right? Yay. But even when you don't show up and you still get it, then it's not participation anymore. Right? But the Word will give you whatever you want to keep you out in the world. It'll give you whatever title. It'll give you whatever desire. It'll give you whatever it is that you want in order to keep you in the world. It'll make you look like a peacock if you want to get that decorated, if that's what it'll take to keep you away from the things of God. But, he says, and back up if you will, verse number 15, let us therefore is be perfect. What's that perfect? I want to be decorated with heavenly things. I don't want wood, hay, and stubble. I want gold, silver, precious gems. That when I stand before God, I'm not going to be perfect. There's, it's going to be revealed to everybody all the times that I failed Him. But when He puts the works of my life from the day that I got saved until the day that I stand before Him, into the fire of His judgment, I want gold, silver, and precious gems to come out that I can lay down at His feet. Say, I didn't earn these for me, these were for you. That's the decoration that we ought to strive for. Paul said there's a crown of life for those that have joy at his appearing. They're anticipating it. They're expecting it. But more importantly, they are happy when it does happen. Now, you want to be decorated. There's a way to be decorated. But if you seek decoration in order to be accepted, there is acceptance among the brethren. If you're one of his, there's something in my spirit that bears witness with something in your spirit that says we are the sons of God and we're just knit together like family. Doesn't matter if it's the first time I've met you or the 50th time I've met you or if it's like Brother Josh and we can't get rid of him we just keep showing up, right? 5,000th time and technically I'm related to him. I really can't get rid of him. Not by marriage, which means technically we can kick him out. But anyway. Okay. We can get rid of them, but it'd take a lot of work. But he said, if you want acceptance, there's true acceptance. Right? If you're in, you're in. But you don't have to be decorated with all these acclaim. In fact, those that come to Christ, those that around here get along with them, they say, don't notice me. I just come to worship the Master. Right? They have this perfect mindset that I desire Him. I'm glad y'all are here. I didn't come for you. Right? It's good to see Brother Mike and Sister Kay because for some odd reason Brother Mike tells me I'm one of Sister Kay's favorites. I don't get that. But she doesn't always get to come. When she does get to come, I, thanks for bringing her. You can leave. Right? There's acceptance. 
But I didn't come to see y'all. Much as I love y'all, if you didn't show up, it wasn't going to hurt my feelings today. I, I came to see Him. We forget those things which are behind. Right? God forbid any of y'all ever do something to hurt me. Not the first time. I've been hurt before. Right? It's not going to keep me out of the house of God. Right? There have been people in church hurt me before. Guess what? I'm still here. The shame is that they're not. Because they're getting things made right. They got. Got gone. So what are you saying? If your desire is right, forget the... What happened yesterday? Can't change it. There'll be eternal implications for it. Right? Did I witness those yesterday that I had the opportunity to? Did I refuse opportunities? Because I just wanted to do what I wanted to do. I was ruled by my belly, my desires. He's saying, let us therefore as many be perfect, be thus minded. Forget those things which are behind. Press forward. Press is a verb. That means it requires act, uh, action, effort. Press toward. Right, anybody watch basketball? You guys know about the full court press? I hated the full court press because I was usually the guy who was throwing the ball inbound. Because right? for some odd reason, for a good portion of my life, I was taller than everybody else. They just you play center. No, I don't, want, I don't want to play center. You know what stinks about playing center? You've got to remember to keep counting because if you stay in the paint for too long, then there's a whistle and then you can't. Nope, you're done. Right? We turned the ball over because Jordan was in the paint for too long. That's stupid. You know why that's stupid? Because they, they tried to make a rule to make short people feel better, and they said, well, the tall guy can't stand in front of the rim the whole time. Why not? You want me to play defense? I'll play defense. you got to come to me. They didn't like that. But in all seriousness, right? people don't like things that press. They don't like pressing. Right? People are okay with walking. People aren't okay with walking uphill. People want downhill. Right? And me included. Right? Somebody got work. I'm not kidding you. Not this weekend. Last weekend, he went somewhere in the middle of Missouri where it was like 93 degrees and had 80% humidity and he ran 100 kilometers over the weekend and then was back at work on Monday. I said, I'd be dead. I wouldn't have made it to the, to the hunter. He's training for a race. Training for a race in Death Valley. In, in July. Not in February, in July. And it's even longer than 100 kilometers. He said, what's wrong with him? I don't know. He is the exact opposite of what I am. Our brains work the same, so I like him because he can explain things the way that you know I understand it. He said he broke his foot in the middle of a race and finished. I said, you're dumb. He said, yeah, I had to end up getting bolts in it. I'm like, yeah, that's what happens when you break the bone so bad they can't put it back together. He said, I used to run with doctors, but they'd look at me and say, I think you should stop, and then they'd get angry if you didn't listen to them. And I was like, yeah, because doctors are usually used to people saying, yeah, okay, you know what you're talking about. Maybe I should take it easy. But he said, there are some people that just go. They press. They have become accustomed to and embrace living where it is uncomfortable. Even if it means that it's to their own detriment. Why? Because what their goal is is more important than what happens to them. Press towards the mark. Can't coast into heaven and then receive decoration from God. And some people say, well, there's some people just make it in by the skin of their teeth. No, because it's not dependent on what we do, it's dependent on what He did. Everybody's getting there on the same footing. But when we get there, there's going to be a half that hadn't been told on why we did the things that we did going to be a lot of people that were used to standing up in front of other people on Sundays 
And it's going to be revealed that the desire in their heart wasn't for Christ, it was for themselves. There's going to be revealed that there's a whole lot of people that you didn't hear much out of when you was in the house of God, but it's revealed that because of their desire, they would forsake sleep and grab the horns of the altar. Or they'd stay up studying, trying to find the answer that somebody at their life needed to hear from God. Not so that they could get a claim, but because they loved Him and they loved others. Which is what He commanded us to do. Love the Father, but then His commandment was that we love one another. Not as we love, but as God loves. Love God with everything you've got, and then love those that God loves. You say, who's God love? Well, the Son came so that the world, that's everybody, that none should pay. You know what none means? None. Yeah, used to, I thought, this is funny. I think I was like back in the third grade. Might have been fourth grade. I thought that none was a combination of no and then one. And I'm like, that makes sense. Right? No one, none. You just take one of the O's out, new word. No, it's a different word. Okay, not the same thing. But it does mean no one. None. Right, you say, well, if he wants none to perish, no one, what's that mean? He loved all. And he didn't love them where they would be after he found it. He loved them where they were at. And all that they were. How can you love somebody when they're at their worst? Because you forget what was behind. Right? And you understand, right? The world... We don't care what they did. We care what Christ can do for them right now. See, forgetting those things, what you're buying, that's not just relevant to us. In order to forgive, you have to forget what somebody did. In order to mend, you have to be willing to take off those bandages. And You know what happens when you keep picking at something? A bigger scar. Some people keep picking at things because they want people to have sympathy on them for how big the scar is. Other people want justification for why they're so upset about it. Right? I got a paper cut on my finger this week, right? And it's on the finger that I used to click on the mouse, right? It didn't keep me from getting any work done. Right? It's going to heal over. I'm not going to tell anybody, hey, back in the summer of 2021, I got this paper clip or this paper cut that was so bad. No. But some people will get a paper clip and keep picking at it until eventually the cut, which is very small, and that's why this one's so big, because I had a big thing that I kept picking at because it was driving me nuts. Right? What was small, eventually it's something that takes up their whole hand. They just keep peeling away. Because if you keep picking while something's trying to heal, you're not just taking off what the healing's done, you're taking off part of what's alive next to it. Anybody ever pick a scab and then realize, wait a second, if that's where the cut was, why did the skin come all the way up to here? Because it was trying to make something that wasn't there alive. And they connected it to the thing that was alive in order to give it life. So when you take it off, you're taking part of the stuff that's alive off. If you keep picking and keep picking, eventually you're going to have a wound that people, hey, that's pretty bad. Didn't start off that bad. They couldn't forget those things which were behind, let God heal them of it, and then press on. Be thus minded. Okay. Verse number 16 says, Nevertheless, we're into, we have already attained. What have we attained? Well, we have attained or gotten a hold of. Right? There's things that we haven't gotten a hold of. Right? Streets of gold, mansions. You can keep them. I just want Jesus. Right? I'm convinced we're not even going to use the house that God made for us in heaven. But because He's a good host, He said, If I'm going and preparing a place... You're coming with me, so you're going to have your own place. Why? Because he's a gentleman. And he does all things well. In fact, I'm of the mindset. Okay. It doesn't say that the mansion is going to be made of gold. He just says, in my father's house for many mansions. Right? What if, I'm just thinking about this this week, brother. what if he makes it so well, and he makes it out of all them gems, and just like the foundations, 
But what if wherever you are in the city, you can see straight through to Jesus? Yeah, there's a wall there, but you can see right through it because it's made out of diamond or it's made out of emerald. His face is the light of the city. That means everywhere that there's light, his face is going to be. That makes sense to me if everything is just see-through. Even if you were in your room, guess who's there? You can see Jesus. Just thought I had this week. Anyway, nothing to do with the lesson. But we haven't attained them things yet. What have we attained? Well, we've attained acceptance among the brethren. We have got a hold of the Holy Ghost. We do have His Word. Those things that we can have, why think about the things that we can't have yet? Right? Well, I wonder whose mansion's going to be close. I'm of the mindset that it's just going to be like a big circle around Jesus and everybody's the same distance away no matter where your house is. Shut up. It's not going to matter when we get there. We're all going to be at His feet. Right? Why wrestle and struggle with things that when we get there aren't going to matter? About the old illustration, somebody going through, you know, hard, bad sickness. Husband comes in and says, Honey, when we get to heaven, we'll find out why this happened. She said, Honey, when we get to heaven, it's not going to matter. But why do we struggle with the things that we cannot attain and then refuse those things which we can attain? I can attain a better understanding of God's Word, I can attain the will. God's will for my life. I can attain a spirit that is in harmony, in line with His Spirit. I can attain truth. Or else I wouldn't be able to worship Him because it takes spirit and truth in order to worship Him. But we can attain, but some people want to reject what they can have in order to attain things that they really can't have. Things that are fickle, things that change, that are fluid. But everything with God is solid, firm. You can grasp it. But if you've grasped it, that, that means that your faith is perfect. That mindset will be in those that are perfect, that are complete. What's that mean? They've taken what God's given them and they've applied it. They have attained. Then say that they've received. You can receive something and not open it. To attain it, you must make it a part of you. You must take it in. Not just receive, but open and then take it in. Truly apply it. But he says, we have already attained. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Everything that we said is to get to this point. What is the same rule? Perfect law of liberty. We've already covered that. What is the same rule? Him supremely first, then others second. Right? Take, take no thought for tomorrow. It's not promise, not guaranteed. Our life's a vapor. Could be snuffed out before the end of the day. But today is the day that the Lord has made. It's already here, made, finished, done. So let's do what He wants us to do today. But let us mind the same rule. What is that? The rule of spiritual responsibility. I can't live your spiritual life for you. The pastor can't live his spiritual life for you. You have to become responsible for your spiritual liberty. Now you stand free where Christ made you free, but you have to accept that freedom, become responsible for it. What is the rule that every Christian should strive for? I want to be as he would have me to be. Not what he wants somebody else to be, what he wants me to be. All I can be is what he wants me to be. Why? Because he's going to make me into it. And if I'm trying to say, well, Lord, I want to be like that, he's not going to turn me into what he wants me to be because I haven't yielded to it yet. I haven't said, okay, Lord, start working on me. Because I'm resisting and saying, well, Lord, that drawing doesn't look like the one for that person over there. Yeah, well, that person may not be finished yet, and they may not end up looking like it. All I know is, is that I can be a vessel of honor for them. So we yield. But then it says, let us 
mind the same rule. Okay, but then he goes on to say, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. What is mind the same thing? That means agreed obedience. Uniformity among the brethren. Well, we've already said we all may not look the same, but we all can have the same mindset. We all can be led the same way. How's that, Holy Ghost? So liberty does take responsibility, takes listening, takes acting. Not putting on a show, but doing what he would have you do. You gotta listen, you gotta do it. Sometimes you gotta not do. If he says go, you go. If he says stay, you stay. If you're sitting in church and he says shout, shout. If he doesn't say shout, don't shout. Man, like Brother Aaron prayed a little bit ago. Right? God don't want you to talk, don't talk. But how do you know? Trust me, you'd know. Like, I don't say much. Listen, I'm up here during Sunday school. During church service, say very little. I'll shout a whole lot. But very rare is it that I get up and give a testimony. Why? Because when I get up, I know he wants me to say it. There's a fire right about here where he says, if you don't say it, well, he doesn't say this, but I think, if I don't get up and say this, I'm going to die. Why? I don't want to grieve and quench the Holy Ghost, but the same way, if I feel that way, I'm not just going to wrestle with it over there until the moment passes. If I know he wants me to say something, nobody in the building is going to stop me from saying it. But what is, that's my responsibility. If we all say, okay, we're all hitched to him, let's follow after him, we all have the responsibility to say, boys, if he tells me to do something, I'm going to do it. Don't care if you like it. Don't care if you approve of it. In fact, David's own wife didn't like the way that he started worshiping God by the time he got to Jerusalem after he made all them sacrifices bringing the ark back into the city. That's what happened to her. God said, because you were ashamed of his worship for me, she wasn't allowed to have kids. To her shame, she despised worship. So God said, you're not favored among me anymore. Like his children and heritage of the Lord. And he said, what, what did we say? The responsibility is, you worship God the way that God wants you to worship. If you're going to be like Brother Phil and be weird, that's fine. Right? If you're going to be like so many other people around here that may not have been raised around, they're still a little, some people still a little uncomfortable. They're not uncomfortable with other people getting up and shouting. They're just saying, well, it feel weird for me to do that. Yeah, it felt weird the first time I shouted too. I got over it. Say, so what do you say? God wants you to do it, do it. If he doesn't know. That's real simple. But it takes conscience, effort, every second of every day. Why do you think that the Apostle Paul instructed us pray without ceasing? Lord, if there's something you want me to do, tell me. Right? And because I care so much, I'm not going to let things build up in my life to where I've got unconfessed sin or iniquity in my life and you won't have fellowship with me because I haven't sought fellowship with you. If you've got the mindset that because of your desire, because you're dedicated, you've forsaken, you're going to press on. You don't care about the world's decoration. You want to be favored among God, among God's people. Doesn't matter what the world treats me, I know there's a place I can come and people are going to accept me. Not because I'm special, but because God accepts me, and they're accepted by God, and we just accept people that God's accepted. We accept people that God may not have accepted yet, but He intends to. But I always do try my best. We got people, it's their first time coming in. I want to go up and say, hey, good to see you. I may just shake their hand and say, hey, good morning. But I want them to know that they're not outcasts. Right? New doesn't necessarily mean bad. Okay? Well, Mike, I know you got 40 pairs of shoes that are older than me. It's not a bad thing to go get a new pair of shoes that got more arch support in them. Huh? How do you know that? Because I wore a pair of shoes yesterday. I hadn't worn them in a long time. My feet hurt today. I'm getting old. Used to, I could put on whatever pair of shoes I wanted to. It didn't matter the next day. 
New's not bad. What is bad is letting those things which are new or different influence our desire for Him. Right? Our eyes should be on Him so hard that we can't see anything else. But the truth is, is that we got to live in the world afflicted. Right? Always pressed upon by the world. We got to press back. How do we do that? Got to have the same mindset. What's that mindset? Him first. How are we going to do it? Through Him, because in the Holy Ghost, He can make us into what we need to be. We are more than conquerors through Christ, but if I try to, you know, shoehorn my way into a situation, arm of flesh is going to fail me. Lay not on my own understanding. But instead, embrace those things which I can't attain, that I can't have. Here, now. Why? For His honor and His glory. All right, that's it. Take a short break. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.